A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. This time, two parts. And it's going to be quite interesting. So definitely watch both parts. And maybe you are going to learn something new about something you are probably very familiar with, namely parabolas. Oh yeah, hooray, Papa Flemmy. That sounds really exciting. Quadratic functions, polynomials of second degree. Wow. But trust me, it's going to be cool. And you are most certainly going to learn something new that you haven't learned before. Namely, a different kind of form or definition of the parabola using conic sections. If you never really touched on Kepler's law and also ellipses and the like, and, and maybe uh, elementary geometry or analytic geometry, then this could be something for you. There's probably something here that you haven't heard of before. And today we are going to take a look at just a different way to formulate a parabola. And next time we are going to take a look at the so-called universal parabolic constant, which is one of my most favorite constants. Hope you're going to enjoy the video. Definitely make sure to watch all of it. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. So yeah, more information at the end of the video. Now, at first, we are going to keep it easy and we are going to take a look at just the parent function f of x being equal to x squared, just a simple monic polynomial of second degree. And at the very end, once we get a definition for that, a new kind, we are just going to translate it up, down, left, right, and then we are going to be um, done with the whole spiel here. So at first, we are going to take a look at conic sections a tiny little bit. What are conic sections? Imagine you have a cone, okay, like this three-dimensional thing right here, that's a cone. And what you can do is you can cut the cone up. If you make a cut like this, parallel to our um, surface area down here, you're going to get a circle. If you do it slightly on an angle, you're going to get an ellipse. If you do it on a slightly more angly cut, you're going to get a hyperbola. And if you do it a bit more, you are going to get yourself a parabola out. Now. All of those have something in common. Namely, all of those structures have a so-called focus. It's a point right in the middle. For a circle, the focus is going to be the middle point. For an ellipse, we actually have two foci and a certain eccentricity of the ellipse. For hyperbola, you have the same thing. And for a parabola, too. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to define a parabola using the so-called focus. So if we take a look at the parent function here, looks like this. The focus does lie somewhere here. Maybe you have heard of a parabolic mirror, which is going to collect all the sunlight right somewhere in the so-called focus and you can burn shit with it very nicely. I'm going to call the focus capital F. Now we need a few more things to define ourselves as a parabola using the focus because as mentioned before for conic sections, the focus always plays a role, but the parabola is a special case where the focus and the so-called lattice rectum, which is the line which runs parallel to the x-axis and right through the focus, form the parabola by the following definition. We are going to create ourselves another line which runs parallel to the x-axis. This right here is called the directrix. And what is a parabola? The parabola is the set of all points, for example, this point up here or this point or this point, which are equal distance away from the focus f and also the directrix. Since the distance means the shortest path from a point to this line down here is going to be a perpendicular line. So this is going to be important later. Now I'm going to call this point p here and this point down here where we meet the directrix I'm going to call it capital D. And this is what a parabola is. It's just the set of all points which are equal distance away from the focus and also the directrix. Holds for this one too and this one too. And you might notice I haven't drawn a parabola <laughs> because this does not hold. But it's just for illustration purposes. Now we are going to turn this into something more mathematical and then we are going to trace it back to a parabolic equation, a polynomial of the second degree. Now what did I state just a second ago? We define a parabola to be the set of all points where the distance from the directrix to the point P on a parabola is the same as the distance from set point P 
to our focus. Now, obviously, for those points, we need a few x and y coordinates. Now, let us start with the directrix d. The directrix d is just a constant function at a certain y height. And this y coordinate that we are going to have, what is it going to be? Here, you need to make use of a very trivial fact. Now, consider the focus being a set length away from the origin of our coordinate system. I'm going to call this length f, which is going to be the focal length, small f. Now, by definition, it's only a parabola if this point right here, which lies on the parabola right here in the origin, is equally far away from the focus and the directrix. And this is something you could get really stuck with because you are thinking to yourself, what is the y-coordinate of our directrix here? Well, it's trivial. The y-coordinate is at negative f, obviously, because those two distances must be equally far away. This is like the hardest part of the problem here, figuring this very trivial fact out. So this right here is also f, meaning what is going to happen? Our point on the directrix is lying exactly at, okay, and in this case, what we are using is an x coordinate which corresponds to our p right here and also negative s. Now our point p is going to have an x and a y coordinate where our y coordinate is basically just um, x plugged into uh, f of x squared, but I'm simply going to call it y. And also our focus f for now is going to lie on the y axis, so x being equal to zero and s away from the origin, by definition the focal length. And now we can go ahead and put all of this into our distance formulas, which are defined by Papa Pythagoras. So the distance from d to p is going to be x minus x, which is going to be zero. So the square root of y and then minus minus, so y plus f but squared. And this must be equal for it to be a parabola to, we are going to get x minus zero squared, so this is just x squared, and then plus, we are going to get y minus f squared. And this basically already settles the deal. Now, we just need to solve this for y to get ourselves a parabola out, because our parabola has the form, at least our parent function y being equal to x squared. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Now, our Square root is monotonically increasing um, on its domain, meaning we can just compare, obviously, our arguments here. So this is equivalent to comparing y plus f squared to x squared plus y minus f squared. Now, we are just going to make use of the binomial formula, turning this into y squared plus 2yf plus f squared is equal to x squared plus and now we're going to get y squared minus 2yf plus f squared. And now we're just going to cancel a bunch of things out. f squared is going to cancel out. y squared is going to cancel out. Leaving us overall with just 2yf is equal to x squared minus 2yf. We are going to bring the 2yf to the other side. Meaning 4yf is going to be equal to x squared. And now we are going to divide both sides by 4 divided by f. Our focus trivially is always a distance away, a non-zero distance away from our vertex of the parabola. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a parabola. Then that's equal to y being equal to x squared divided by 4f. Now this right here is the general formula for a parabola with a certain focus. Now for our parent function up here, our focus must lie at one quarter. So at y being equal to one quarter for it to be a parent function y being equal to x squared. Now this right here is a formula that works out and ignoring translation and the like, this right here always works. This right here is a general formula for a parabola. But we're going to go a step further and see how this right here is going to correspond to a parabola in vertex form. Let y be equal to a times x minus b squared plus c. Now this right here is 
a straight parabola or maybe a parabola which is open in a downwards y direction moved by b to the left or right and also by a factor of c up and down. And now we are going to just use this translation of b and c, b in x direction and c in y direction on basically what we have down here. So we are going to do a translation. Namely, we are going to say that we are moving our focus um, away. No, it, it, it really doesn't matter what we actually move away. We can just move the point P away. So what is going to happen is we are going to um, take X and we are going to translate it to X minus B. And we are going to take Y and translate it to Y minus C. This is all we are going to do here and it's just going to work out. That's just a simple translation that we are having here. So what we are going to get now is by y being equal to x squared over 4f. This is going to be translated to y minus c being equal to, and now this is 1 over 4f times x minus b squared. And by adding c on both sides, we are going to get a generalized expression for our parabola and this is already in vertex form, that's the magic of translation. Y being equal to 1 over 4f times x minus b squared plus c. And now if you compare our parabola in vertex form to what we have here, we can actually define the focus as just being a stretching factor. Namely, by comparison we are going to get that a must be equal to 1 over 4f. Or in other words, our focal length can be defined as 1 over 4a because a must be non-zero, otherwise it wouldn't be a parabola. And this right here is the generalized focal length. And if we now use this translation also on our focus point right here, we are going to get that since f is the same as 1 over 4a, that our focus f in the general case is going to lie at b and also c plus 1 over 4a. Isn't that magical? And with this, you can define yourself any O parabola, doesn't matter how it's open, how it's stretched and the like, using conic sections and also the focus <laughs> that we have covered here in this video. And there is one more video to come on the universal parabolic constant, which is one of my most favorite constants ever. It's just amazing. And also another video on the so-called catenary curve, including one of Amazon's um, interview questions that has been covered many times um, on the internet already, but I'm going to see if I can add my own little twist to it. And I hope you have enjoyed what, it, what you have seen today. And if you did enjoy what you have seen, then you might certainly like what the contents of today's sponsor Preant have to offer for you. Now I tried my very best to offer at least a little image of conic sections here and also this little <laughs> um, sketch for you. But this is not the best one could obviously do when it comes to visualizing mathematics and taking those visuals and translating them over to mathematical formulas. And I'm always trying my best to do it here during my videos, which are a bit more theoretical. But if you are a visual kind of learner, then definitely the content that you can find over on Preen are going to be more to your liking than my videos could ever offer to you. Now Preen offers some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the World Wide Web. It really doesn't matter if you want to learn something about, as I mentioned before, parabolas, conic sections, quadratic formulas, whatever physics, chemistry, it doesn't matter what you want to learn today in the STEM field. Go over to Brilliant, type in general relativity and you're going to find a course over on their website and app which you can also use on the go by the way and see if you can learn something new today and on a daily basis going forward. With the nearly 17 interactive courses in all topics STEM, you're going to be settled for a lifetime's worth of online learning content. It's just great. You should just go over there and try it out for yourself. With their interactive learning concept, it's going to be an easy feat to learn something new daily. Just take a look at whatever I'm showing you here right now. It really doesn't matter if it's the geometry course or the space exploration course or whatever over on their app. 
point is, what they use is visualizations and graphics that you can play around with. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat between you and their visualizations. And with those visualizations, you can try to get a better understanding of the problems at hand. Play around with those, see what they are going to get you at. And with a bit more practice over on their courses, you are certainly going to be better at the field you are practicing for than you could ever wish for by, for example, watching my videos and just trying to see everything in a theoretical kind of manner. As mentioned before, if you are a visual learner, Brilliant is most definitely the best thing you could use to get further in your studies. So definitely make sure to try it out today by using my link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flammablemaths. With it, you are going to get a 30-day free trial of amazing awesomeness. You can also use my QR code somewhere up here in the corner. The whole landscape of Brilliant, the doors are open. Try it out for completely free, 30 days. And if you feel like this could turn into a long-term relationship between you and Brilliant, then make sure to use the link completely. And you're going to get 20% of an annual Brilliant subscription. It's most definitely worth it. Try it out. Ask down there in the comments if other people already have um, a subscription over on Brilliant and what they think of their services. And I can guarantee you, you can also watch my old live streams, that people are going to be satisfied with what Brilliant can offer to you. And I'm certain that you can get further in your studies using their product and their interactive learning concept. So try it out and support the channel this way massively. And this is it for today. More videos to come on the Parabola. I know it doesn't sound exciting at first, but having a new definition of Parabola is pretty kind of cool, right? So yeah, Thank you guys for watching and I'm going to see you. Have a great weekend. See ya.